Welcome to the Pride of Detroit POD cast, Pride of Detroit.com, Pride of Detroit on Twitter, Pride of Detroit on Facebook, as I try to keep my voice together to stop the hair in the back of my throat for trying to uh, throw me off. This is the summer of Lions, Lions summer. Welcome. As we here at Pride of Detroit, roll on. We have lots to get to today, so we'll jump right in. You can watch us live on twitch.tv slash Pride of Detroit every, every Monday for the POD cast. And of course, we have plenty more offerings over there, be it First Bite, various other streams, Spotify Live, which went over time over the weekend. So welcome. Welcome to the Empire. And if you're listening on the podcast feed itself, thank you. Thank you for putting up with everything we do. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. So let's start. I am Chris Perfett, the adequate host at Chris Perfett on Twitter. We have some, a very special guest with us. We'll get to a second. Let's get the rest of everyone here. Uh, going Jeremy Reisman, the fearless leader, uh, sunned and burned from the punting competition for beat writers, the very nerdy thing that happens out there. Welcome, Jeremy. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me again, Chris. Appreciate it. I'm, I'm glad I'm always welcome here. You, you, you are always welcome here on your own podcast, <laughs> which you help co-host. Yes. As always, just, you just, are part of this. I'm just I'm happy I'm, I'm still allowed to be here, even though I didn't win the, the, the beat writer skills competition i guess is what they're calling it great great shame upon us yes <laughs> so I'm, I'm i'm happy i'm still good to be here i don't know about you uh brian matthews at ryan underscore pod he is the shadow governor of the pod cast after all i i, I don't know what that means <laughs> um but uh jeremy calling that a skills competition is an insult i think to skills how dare you you weren't there asked, you didn't see I, it I, I asked Jeremy before we we jumped on, like, so with you with you doing that, do you at least appreciate punters a little bit more now? And he still said no. Stop. Well, he doesn't care about kickers because it's so easy, right, Jeremy? Two for two. That's right. We're we'll, we'll talk a little bit more of that. It maybe maybe in the in the scraps. So we have a very special guest to get to here. Um, for two years now, we have been offering charity. Uh, we've been running various charities, and we've been uh, raffling off appearances for the pod cast and in true pod cast fashion we are now getting to them we're going to have on some of the guests lauren moore is with us hello more lauren hello thank you for having me so lauren you can find her on twitter at lauren with a e l a u r e n got 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 popula p-o-p-u-l-a um so you you have popula is that is that how i'm supposed to read that i'm so popular no not at all um i actually <laughs> oh, okay. Um, was in a ska band uh, when I was in high school, college. Um, and I was the drummer for our band and the only girl. And so we decided to name our band Betty Got Popular. And oh, so, I was about to like, say, and the name of that band popular, was... turned into my, like, little, yeah. <laughs> and of course, everybody thinks it's so funny to go and think, Are you, is your name Betty? It's like, yeah, no. <laughs> but, I, was about to say, I was about to make the joke <laughs> and say, like, the name of that band was the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. <laughs> Which officially they just uh, uh, broke up this year. Oh, oh, did they? I know, big loss. Late, someone, late, someone... late breaking news on the podcast. Yeah, my, my <laughs> big, middle school big self news. is very sad. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, Lauren is. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you for for all of the generous donations to our friends who we have supported through the years. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about like you're you're going to be joining us through the the rest of the P, the POD cast because that was the prize. Um, you want to tell us like a little bit about yourself, like how'd you get into like being a Lions fan or? Yeah, so um, born and raised here in uh, Metro Detroit. So um, just growing up, obviously um, a Detroit sports fan in general, um, I was definitely more of a daddy's girl um, growing up. So like, you know, I always spent more time hanging out with him, um, working on cars, watching sports and all that kind of stuff. And it kind of grew into my, my own obsession. So like, you know, I live and breathe, uh, Pistons, Lions, Red Wings, all of that. Um, so obviously as part of that, you know, got huge into sports podcasts and found you guys. So um, super thankful to be here. Um, wanted to give a quick shout out to the Caskey family. Yeah. Who uh, did do the charity um, that I was a part of. And uh, also a shout out to you guys. Cause I mean, you guys put all this kind of stuff on. You have been doing it for over two years of uh, these awesome charity events. And I just think it's really cool. Um, you know, so mad props to you guys. Appreciate Thank that. You. We we like to, we like to say we're like I mean we we like to be a community. So I I I was when Jeremy said we were raffling off like the ideas of people joining the uh, 
the POD cast, I'm like, all right, well, we've, we've always, I've always liked to have POD cast as a platform where I can hand the mic and yank someone up on stage. Like it's like a, like a reggae show, <laughs> keeping with the, uh, keeping with the, the theme of music here. We're and going that, just like 50 people up on stage with a microphone to pass around. And that was such a special fun night with, with Kyle Kasky and, and his wife, Kayla. And that was good. We, we were doing karaoke all night. And, and at one point Kyle grabbed the, a guitar of his own and did his, did like an acapella version of ice ice baby if i if i oh remember correctly uh it was it was so much fun and yeah un- unfortunately we can't continue to do the the live karaoke here on our twitch platform but we're we're trying to find other ways to to make it fun and, and continue to give to to charities we hear about maybe like a live karaoke show maybe maybe, maybe. as we start maybe. opening up we'll see let's get into some of the uh so lauren lauren will be part of the whole podcast we've got a mailbag to get to we got some mini camp stuff uh, I want to start, though, with the big news of the week. And um, it's got Detroit Detroit sports sphere in a tizzy because it's the big story we have. John Penasini is announcing his retirement from football at age 25. Very young, but Penasini, who has been a favorite for a lot of people, uh, for probably for a lot of the reason for the name, but also one of those stories you really want to root for that um you know late round late round draft pick late round draft pick played you know 32 career games started in 12 of them uh you know just a just a big big fighter but he has decided to make his announce on instagram he's made the decision to retire from football he's gonna miss his teammates and the coaching staff but i'm glad i got to experience i'm happy and excited for whatever my life has for me so jeremy uh I guess I'll lead it off to you. Like, how do you feel about this? What kind of precipitated Penasini deciding to retire? Yeah, I mean, it, we, we don't really have the answer to, to why exactly he retired. Um, but, I mean, usually when it is a young player like this retiring, it, it, it's one of two things. It, it's falling out of love of, with the game or it's kind of injury related. Don't, you know, you don't you want to put your body through that. And as a nose tackle, you have to put your body through a lot. And so I, I have to imagine that's probably – what it was, you know, we, we heard that kind of horrific story about after his rookie year, he had these golf ball sized calcium uh, deposits build up in his shoulders to a point where he couldn't even lift his shoulders over, you know, over his head or lift his arms over his head, I should say. Um, and, and, you know, he, he got through last season healthy, but um, you know, he, the, the other facet of this is like he wasn't a great scheme fit for what the Lions are trying to change to do. He isn't kind of that quick, fast, first, fast, uh, fast first step um, that you need kind of maybe in a three tech or a one tech. Um, he's just pure nose tackle. And the Lions just aren't going to have a pure nose tackle on their defense much anymore. They, they, they're just not going to line up with one. So maybe that factored into it at all. Um, it's, he's a guy that I thought was going to have to fight for a roster spot if he stuck around. So in terms of like a loss for the, for the team in, in terms of a player, it's probably not that big of a deal. Um, but Todd Wash was talking today and how much of a deal it was for him to lose Penasini as a player, because he was a really, really hard working guy. I, I talked to his college coach um, right after Lions drafted and, and that dude is a fighter. So um, it's clear something I, I would imagine personal came up where it's just like, he didn't, want to do this to his body anymore he didn't want to you know he may, maybe has something else that, that that he's a little more passionate about doing so um again you, you don't you want to you don't want to make assumptions about a guy like this but i don't think it, it was a matter of just like kind of giving up football because he didn't like it or, or didn't want to put you know didn't want to put in the effort that that certainly isn't what's happening here yeah the the other interesting thing i think um it, it's not really penicini related uh, specifically, but like I, I saw the photos of Deshaun Elliott, um, and there there was another Lions player too. But they, they went to go do some like cooking at a uh, at a pizza shop um, mm-hmm. because Deshaun Elliott was talking about like you know life after football. He, he's interested in getting into culinary stuff, but I, I think that's kind of just where my mind went with Penasini immediately because it is so early in his career for him to step away from football. But you know, um, football players aren't football robots. And uh, I think, you know, without without doing too much guesstimating or, um, you know, uh, speaking, uh, you know, out, out of turn, I, I think that probably he just made a decision where I'm ready to maybe move on with my life and, and do something else. 
Lauren, how do you feel on, uh, well, you have any good memories on Penasini? How do you feel about his? Well, I mean, I, it is a little bit disappointing that we're losing a um, name bracket um, contender. True. <laughs> I, know, I, may, but, I might just keep yeah. him around just just for the heck of it because. You got you to gotta name the name bracket after him. Like yeah. The Penasini yeah. Memorial bracket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, I mean, there's not really too much more to um, offer, especially when with the fact that you guys said we still don't at this point know exactly um what the cause is for him walking away um i think my biggest thing though is i just hope not to see um a lot of like you know penicini slander out there from right. um any of the fan bases like i you can't judge somebody for wanting to do something different what, what these guys do um for a living and what they put their bodies through um i it's interesting to see you have to wonder like is, did andrew luck start a trend where these yeah. people are starting to want to walk away um you know at a much earlier age and just you know with that that risk scenario of um, you know, is it worth what I'm what I'm doing for my sacrifice in my long term um, health? Um, so, you know, it just bottom line is like it stinks to lose them for sure. Um, I have to imagine my, my assumption is it probably had to be injury more than likely. That's kind of what the vibe I get. But yeah. um, even if it's not for him to wanna um, you know make a move to do something else for in his life, um, I fully support it, and I hope that everybody else can get behind him too. Yeah. And I mean, like you, you mentioned, you mentioned Andrew Luck there. And I think like, not just, you know, Chris Borland, I think retired very young. He retired at That's 24. Right. Yeah. Um, Penasini's about the same age there. And I mean, for Lions fans, I, I completely agree with you. Like, I don't want to see Lions fans kind of demean him for this. Cause like Jer Jeremy mentioned it with like the calcified golf ball sized crap in his shoulders too. Like, and I just think of the horror stories we'd hear out of Calvin Johnson too. Like this is a brutal sport. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun. And a lot of guys get great opportunities, but it's uh, as, as working with guys in radio national, they always make the joke about, you know, NFL means not for long. So you got to have to think about what always, what comes after. Absolutely. Two, two quick things. Uh, one is it's kind of bizarre because this was actually the second retirement of a, of a Lions player last week. Uh, undrafted rookie corner Jermaine Waller was the other. We didn't really get a, a, a reasoning for that one either, but um, may, maybe even a little bit more bizarre since it, we're talking about an undrafted rookie. Usually those guys come into camp and are just like really hungry, really ready to go. Um, again, like he had a, a a mountain to climb to, to make a, to make the roster, but maybe, yeah. you know, considering that the Lions a couple undrafted rookies made it last year. There was always a chance. And then just kind of on a, on a, a bit of a lighter note, um, this one also goes down as another notch in the Jeremy Reisman Jersey curse, because I was about to say, you've, you've really crushed Mrs. Ruby with this. I may or may not have bought our, our good friend, Mrs. Ruby, a John Mrs. Penicini Ruby, our fairy jersey. godmother for food. Uh, I bought her a John Penasini Jersey. I broke my own code of buying a Lions player Jersey and uh, look what happened. You monster. I'm it sorry. Doesn't even doesn't even matter if you transfer ownership here. <laughs> I guess not. If, nope. if it's if it's your money, <laughs> only bad things. It's like, are it's like come. the devil. It's like the devil's bottle or whatever that story was. But to be clear, like someone bought me a Jared Davis jersey, or was it Jared Davis? I think it was a Jared Davis jersey. It just has I, to come into contact with you. It, it just, just yeah, has to come. It has to at some point be under my name, whether it's on the receipt or on the mailing address. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> So what does this, um, well, I'll consider this a round table and I'll throw this question out to the rest of you. Like, do, how do you guys feel? Cause losing Penasini is a big blow to what I would say is, is de tackle at defensive, ta uh, the, excuse me, depth at defensive tackle. I can speak. It is a blow to depth at defensive tackle, even though he didn't really fit what the lions wanted to do with, with a nose tackle there. So I want to go around and like how you guys feel about the depth of the unit right now. And if you if this brings any more uh, concern to your mind, well, as we kind of stare down the barrel of the upcoming season, for me, I, I guess there there isn't. Again, I don't feel like there's a a, a big loss because I did, I don't find John Penasini needed to have been a good fit um, with what the Lions are trying to do, but it does kind of bring to light how kind of thin they are on that defensive tackle in general because you you have Aleem McNeil, you have Levi Onzerike, you have Michael Brockers, and then after that, it's it's kind of question marks across the board. Um, you look at, you know, Josh Pascal is, is a guy that's probably going to play a lot of interior, but they, they still consider him more of an edge guy, at least on, on, you know, neutral downs. And then, and then who are we talking about? Uh, you know, Demetrius Taylor is a guy who, who he had an interception today in, in OTAs, undrafted rookie. It, 
you know, the fact that he's even in the conversation is kind of a sign of like, ooh, well, there, there's kind of not that fourth guy. Deshaun Cornell is probably the leader in the camp right now, former seventh round pick, made it made a few good plays during minicamp and, and, and OTAs. So um, he's a guy to keep an eye on for that four spot. But yeah, I think I think there's definitely a battle for that four spot. And Penny Cini was probably going to be a part of it. I just don't know if he was going to win it. Go ahead, Lauren. Um, you know, uh, kind of like just, to, I don't really know if I even have all that much more to add in regards to that one. Um, it's just, it's going to be interesting to see how it all works out. But like you said, considering that, you know, all, all, all in all, he really wasn't like looking to be like huge in the picture of like where we were going. You have to be okay with it. Um, interesting to see if we'll make any moves or anything, if we're still like, you know, even set at, um, at, at tackle, um, sure. at this, at this point. So two roster um, spots, right? Be an interesting, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what we do this summer. Might yeah, I think done. it does open up the Lions to maybe. I know we've got a question in the mailbag about once again late free agent uh, free agents. We've kind of told people in past weeks like don't expect too much help coming over the pike, but it'll probably be a second order of guys who were cut June one. Maybe some of those become interested for the Lions now, just to kind of round out that roster. Uh, probably not a name we'll we'll have heard of, but someone who will do the who's probably been like a lifelong backup or something. Well, who's probably. The, yeah. the, the lines essentially are like John Kaminsky when, when they added him a, a week or two yeah. ago. And he's another guy like, like Josh Pascal who will probably play a little bit inside. So, so he's maybe, maybe this benefits him a little bit and that he could get in the mix as, as that interior guy, even though he has some um, edge, edge experience as well. 